What's up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. We've talked yesterday about the phenomenal book by Murray Rothbard called What Has Government Done to Our Money, which you can get both the ebook as a PDF and the audiobook available for free at Mises.org uh, in the library, which is a, a plethora of resources. And this book specifically is a must read for every Bitcoiner. And why? Well, let's look into it. Let's read chapter nine, the problem of hodling. The critic of monetary freedom is not as easily silenced, however. There is in particular an ancient bugbear of hodling. The image is conjured up of a selfish, toxic Bitcoiner who, perhaps irrationally, perhaps from evil motives, hodls up his Bitcoin unused in his cold storage, thereby stopping the flow of circulation and trade, causing depression and other problems. Is hodling really a menace? Well, in the first place, what has simply happened is an increase in demand for Bitcoin on the part of the hodler. As a result, the prices of goods fall and the purchasing power of Bitcoin rises. There has been no loss to society, which simply carries on with a lower active supply of more powerful Bitcoin. Even in the worst possible view of the matter, then nothing has gone wrong and monetary freedom creates no difficulties. But there is more to the problem than that, for it is to no means irrational for peers to desire more or less Bitcoin in their cold storage. Let us at this point study cold storage balances further. Why do peers keep any cold storage at all? Suppose that all of us were able to foretell the future with absolute certainty. In that case, no one would have to keep cold storage on hand. Everyone would know exactly how much he will spend and how much income he will receive at all future dates. He needs not keep any Bitcoin at hand, but will lend out his Bitcoin so as to receive his payment in the needed amount on the very days he will make his expenditures. But of course, we necessarily live in a world of uncertainty. People do not precisely know what will happen to them or what the future incomes or costs will be. The more uncertain the fearful, the, and fearful they are, the more cold storage they will want to hodl. The more secure, the less cold storage they will keep on hand. Another reason for keeping cold storage is also a function of the real world of uncertainty. If peers expect the price of Bitcoin to fall in the near future, a bear market, then they will spend their Bitcoin now while the Bitcoin is still more valuable, thus dishodling and reducing the demand for Bitcoin. Conversely, if they expect the price of Bitcoin to rise a bull market, they will wait to spend their Bitcoin later when it is more valuable and their demand for cold storage will increase. People's demands for cash balance for a cold storage then rise and fall for good and sound reasons. Economists err if they believe something is wrong when Bitcoin is not in constant active circulation. Bitcoin is only useful is only useful for exchange value. True, but it is not only useful at the actual moment of exchange. This truth has been often overlooked. Bitcoin is just as useful when lying idle in someone's cold storage, even if the Bitcoiner is hodling. For that Bitcoin is being held or hodled now in wait for possible future exchange. It supplies of its own, to its owner right now the usefulness of permitting exchange at any time, present or future, that the hodler might desire. It should be remarkable that all Bitcoin must be owned by someone and therefore that all Bitcoin must be hodled in people's cold storages. If there are 21 million Bitcoin in society, 
all 21 million Bitcoin must be owned and hodled at any one time in the cold storage of individual peers. The total sum of cold storage is always identical to the total sum of Bitcoin in the society. Thus, ironically, if there were not for the uncertainty of the real world, there could be no monetary system at all. In a certain world, no one would be willing to hodl Bitcoin. So the demand for Bitcoin in society would fall indefinitely. Prices would skyrocket without end and any monetary system would break down. Instead of the existence of cold storage being an annoying and troublesome factor interfering with the monetary exchange, it is absolutely necessary to any monetary economy. It is misleading furthermore to say that Bitcoin circulates. Like all metaphors taken from the physical signs, it connotes some sort of mechanical process, independently of human will, which moves at a certain speed or flow or velocity. Actually, Bitcoin does not circulate. It is, from time to time, transferred one, from one peer's cash, uh, cold storage to another's. The existence of Bitcoin, once again, depends upon people's willingness to hodl in cold storage. At the beginning of this section, we saw that hodling never brings any loss to society. Now we will see that movements in the prices of Bitcoin caused by the changes in demand for Bitcoin yields a positive social benefit, as positive as any conferred by increased supplies in goods and services. We have seen that the total sum of cold storage in society is equal and identical with the total supply of Bitcoin. Let, uh, let us assume that the supply remains constant, say 21 million. Now suppose for whatever reason, perhaps growing apprehension, a peer's demand for a cold storage increases. Surely it is a positive social benefit to satisfy this demand. But how can it be satisfied if the total sum of Bitcoin must remain the same? Well, simply as follows. With peers valuing their cold storage more highly, the demand for Bitcoin increases and prices fall. As the result, the same total sum of Bitcoin can now confer a higher real balance. For example, it is higher in proportion to the price of goods, to the work that Bitcoin has to perform. In short, the effective cold storage of the public have increased. Conversely, a fall in the demand for Bitcoin will cost increased spending and higher prices. The public desire for lower, for lower effective cold storage will be satisfied by the, necessary, by the necessity for a given total Bitcoin to perform more work. Therefore, while a change in the price of Bitcoin stemming from a change in the supply merely alters the effectiveness of the money unit, and confers no social benefit, a fall or rise caused by in the change in demand for cold storage does yield a social benefit, for it satisfies a public desire for either a higher or a lower proportion of cash balance of cold storage to that work done by Bitcoin. On the other hand, an increased supply of Bitcoin will frustrate public demand for a more effective total sum of Bitcoin, more effective in terms of purchasing power. People will almost always say, if asked, that they want much more Bitcoin than they can get, uh, that they want as much Bitcoin as they can get. But what they really want is not units of Bitcoin, more Bitcoin, or oh, no, we don't talk about fiat here. <laughs> don't talk about shit coins in general but more effective units, for example, greater command of Bitcoin and services bought by Bitcoin. We have seen that society cannot satisfy its demand for more Bitcoin by increasing its supply, for an increased supply will simply dilute the effectiveness of each Bitcoin. 
and the money will no more will be no more really plentiful than before. Peer's standard of living, ex except in the non-monetary use of Bitcoin, cannot increase by mining more Bitcoin. If people, peers, want more effective Bitcoin in their cold storage, they can get them only through a fall in prices and a rise in effectiveness of each Bitcoin. Peers, when I'm telling you that Murray Rothbard is the most hardcore of all hodlers, then I truly mean it. That dude is legit. And he has predicted all the aspects of Bitcoin in the 1960s. And so if you think that you are a true hodler, well, you have to read Rothbard. Pierce, thank you very much for joining me here on the World Crypto Network for this little fun read of Murray Rothbard's amazing pamphlet, What Has Government Done to Our Money? And oh, we have reclaimed our money. And Bitcoin is a beautiful money as it will ever get. Thank you for joining me and for supporting this show on teleco.in slash Max. You are amazing, Pierce, and see you on the next show. Hoddle strong.